Okay, and I'm back and what we're going to do now, this is part two of creating events in Alice 2 and Alice 3. And what we're going to do now is we're going to, we've, we've shown you how to create events for Alice 2 that uh, allow you to control a character using the arrow keys. Now we're going to switch over to Alice 3, uh, well, actually Alice 3.1, and we're going to show you how to do the exact same thing in Alice 3.1. And what's cool, here I'm, I'm just switching in, what's cool about this is that you actually get to do more programming. Um, sorry, sorry for the movement, but let me switch back really fast. So in Alice 2, all you're doing is just, you're just kind of creating these, just pressing buttons and adding events. And it doesn't really look like a program, it looks more like, um, I don't know, like a PowerPoint document or just something like visual. You're, you're, you're basically just like clicking buttons and stuff. You're not actually doing something that looks like actual programming. So, but if I switch over to Alice 3.1, what we're going to do here is going to actually look a lot more like programming. So, first off, if your screen looks different than mine, if, it, it's, if it's got a whole bunch of extra stuff that looks kind of weird, what I'd suggest is going into Window, uh, Preferences, and then turning off this emphasize classes, like uncheck that. Because when you have, here I'll, I'll choose it for you, click it for you. But when you have the emphasize classes, it can kind of be confusing just trying to figure out where everything is. Um, and also Alice 2 doesn't have, uh, Alice 2 doesn't have the class uh, emphasis. So when you choose that, when you choose to take that off, what you get is not only a lot simpler, it actually looks a lot more like Alice 2, 2.2. So if you're used to Alice 2, definitely go to Window Preferences and take off that Emphasize Classes. Um, and otherwise, like it's up to you what you want to do. So we're going to go, um, in Alice 2 there is a nice handy dandy area for events. Uh, in Alice 3 what you do is you, you make sure you're on the top level of the object tree, so you click on this and um, oh, I'm sorry I have to select this and then it'll bring up the object tree so you can see there's uh, this is the highest level and then within this there's a room there's a camera and I've added a stuffed tiger so just make sure you're on the top level on this um, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, under procedures which is the same thing as methods in 2.0 we're gonna go to edit on the initialize event listeners and notice it says event that is basically where the events tab is it's under this uh, this procedure so I click edit and then that brings up this whole uh, area right here and it's already set up that when the scene is opened when the scene is activated we run my first method what we want to do is we want to add another event listener for arrow keys so I'm going to click this add event listener I'm going to go to keyboard and I'm going to say add a key press listener. I could do the add arrow key press listener, but I want to show you this one because there's uh, it's it's good for any key, not just the arrow key. So I'm going to click add, and then that brings up this guy right here. So um, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to go down to the if else statement and drag that up into this opening right here and I'm going to choose true it doesn't matter we're going to change it in a second anyway you can choose false if we're going to change it, it doesn't matter so notice that under this uh, key press listener there's already four preset functions that it has and what this let me show you what it means this this e right here that's in all of these that means whatever key the user is typed. E just represents whatever key the user is typed. And so I'm going to choose this last one and I'm going to click it and start dragging. And notice like when I start dragging Alice blacks out or blues out all the rest of the screen except where I can actually drop this guy. So I'm going to take it over to the true in the if statement and drop it in and when I drop it it gives me all these options of what keys you want to actually choose. So I'm going to choose the arrow keys, and for right now I'm going to go with the up. And what this says is, if the key that the user types is the up key, then run what's ever in this first area right here. Otherwise, or else, run what's in this else area. 
So what I can do is what we're, or what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a move forward when the up key is, is typed. So I'm going to go over here, go down to the stuffed tiger, and scroll down till I get to the move right here. And then drag this move up here, and I want him to move forward by two meters when the up arrow is pressed. So that's nice, that's handy, that's dandy, but and that should work, but we still have three other um, directions that we want to either turn or move. So I'm going to drag another if else statement up and just drop it in and just choose true, doesn't matter. Now what you can do, you can actually run, um, you could do it this way where you have one if else statement and then another one and another and another like all four in a row but that's it's it's kind of redundant and it's kind of wasteful because what ends up happening is you 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 kind of end up with a lot of extra space where here we have the if this is true run this else do nothing cuz nothing's there and then we're going to have this true and then nothing right there so what i'm going to do to get rid of some of that like redundant white space where the else is is i'm going to actually drag this whole if statement up and drop it into the else statement. And notice that this is now like an outside if statement, this is an inside one. And it's uh, in programming this is called nested if statements because the, the outside one is outside and then this one's kind of nested inside it. Um, and what, what, I, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do, um, drag this over just like we did before, choose the arrow keys and I'm gonna choose down for right now and then again, I'm going to drag the move in, and I'm going to choose backwards, that we want him to go backwards when the down key is typed. And so let me show you what this says. This says, if the key the user types is up, then I want the stuffed tiger to move forward. Otherwise, jump into this next if, and if the key that is typed is down, then I want the tiger to move backwards. And we can kind of keep on doing that, and we're going to keep on doing that for the other two options, um, for the the moving backwards, or, or moving left and moving right. And so I've just created those two extra um, those two extra if statements, and I'm just going to drag down the uh, the different arrow, or if this is the arrow key, do whatever. I'm going to drag those other two in. And I'm going to choose uh, turn because when the left arrow key is typed, I want him to turn left by one fourth or 0.25 revolutions. So, like, turn 90 degrees basically. And then I'm going to do the same thing for when the right key is pressed. I want him to turn right by 0.25 revolutions. So, notice I've got like these four different levels of, of the commands for the arrow keys. And now, what I, what I can do is I can run it, and this will actually control the tiger. So I'm going to click the Run button, and if I first hit the arrow keys, you can, because um, this is a built-in keyboard, you can actually hear as I'm typing the arrow keys in the microphone, which I'm sorry about that, but notice nothing's happening, and, and at first you kind of be like, well, what's going on? Well, Alice 3 has, it's sort of a glitch, but there's two parts of your screen. There's this control area up here, and then there's this screen down here. And when the control area is selected, your keyboard input's not going to work. So by default, when you start it, when you run it, when you run Alice 3.2, this top part is selected, so your keyboard's not going to work. So no, notice there's a little blue arrow around, or a blue circle around this uh, pause button. That means that this is actually, this top part is selected, not the bottom screen. So all you got to do is just click once in the screen area to select the screen. Notice the blue part has gone away. And now, if I start hitting the arrow keys, I go forward, and go backwards, backwards, left, right. It's all, it's all running correctly. Everything is good. I just had to, uh, I just had to press that one button. So you can see that that it's all working correctly, and 
we've done what we've done here with this nested if else statement to uh, to choose the arrow keys that is a lot more like actual programming and it just looks a lot cleaner um, than it, if we had either done just like four uh, if else statements one after the other this this nested works a lot better and then it's it's a lot better than in Alice 2 where it didn't actually look like real programming so that is kind of an introduction to events in Alice 2 and then in this video we did Alice 3 and I hope you enjoy using it and just uh, experimenting with the other events uh, in Alice because we did the we did when a key is pressed, but Alice three actually has a whole lot of different. Uh, I'm gonna click on this to show you. They they actually have a whole lot of different uh, events. They've got they got real some really cool ones, which they're uh, at this point they're still working on learning how to to implement. But uh, we can do object moving. We can do point of view changes. We can do collisions and proximity. Um, this is like really getting into uh, video game almost. Uh, view exit, occlusion. These these are like occlusion is where something uh, gets in front of something on in front of your camera, so you can't see the thing behind it. So th what what you could do for this is, for example, like have something disappear when when something moves in front of it. So say a cloud goes in front of the sun and you tell the sun to disappear when that happens. And that's just running in the background just waiting for that to happen. So the, uh, the listeners, the events in Alice 3.1 are a lot more powerful um, potentially than the, than the ones in Alice 2. So uh, again, like little warning, these are kind of buggy right now in Alice 3.1. Maybe in Alice 3.2 it'll get a little more stable, um, but yeah, you can find some bugs in that. So just be careful, and I guess save a lot or save often. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.